This is heartbreaking. We're talking about 240 hostages, including 30 children who have been held in a dark tunnel now by the terrorists who massacred and raped their way through these people's communities on October 7th. And every minute, every minute that Hamas continues to hold our hostages in the dark and keep their families in the dark is an ongoing crime against humanity. Now we're doing everything we can to get them home. There is a deal in place to secure the release of the first 50 hostages. We're starting with the women and children, and we hope to continue and bring home all of the hostages, the men and the women, the old and the young, the soldiers and the civilians. We're committed to leave no one behind in the Gaza Strip. What have you made of the British media coverage from what you've seen of it so far? Uh, look, it, it really depends. And as a government spokesman, it's not my job to give a telling off to specific media outlets. But I think it's fair to say Israel hasn't been given a fair shake uh, in this conflict. I've done about 150 interviews, television and radio since this war began. And sometimes I'm really flabbergasted by the questions I get. We're trying to present our side of the story. We're explaining why we're having to fight this awful war. We're telling the truth about the October 7th massacre. We're talking about the lengths that we are going to to bring our stolen children back. And sometimes, no matter what facts we present, uh, there are people who will always twist it in a way that makes Israel out to be the baddies, uh, in a way that really requires intellectual somersaults and gymnastics to try to pull that off. Uh, but we have to continue telling the story why we are fighting this war, the war that Hamas declared on us with the October 7th massacre, and why we have no choice but to win, because we can't go back to a world in which the terrorists just over the border, the army of terror just over the border in the Gaza Strip can hurt our people ever again. I think you were... Uh, alluding a little bit to an interview with Kay Burley earlier today. I was speaking to a hostage negotiator this morning. He made the comparison between the 50 hostages, hostages that Hamas has promised, um, promised to release, as opposed to the 150 prisoners that are Palestinians that Israel has said that it will release. And he made the comp comparison between the numbers and the fact that does Israel not think that Palestinian lives are valued as highly as Israeli lives? That is an astonishing accusation. How did that make you feel at the time? Flabbergasted, really. I've given many interviews and that was the first question that left my jaw on the floor. The idea that since Israel is releasing 150 Palestinian prisoners convicted of violent offences in exchange for 50 hostages, that somehow means that we care less about Palestinian lives because that is the deal that we have agreed to. Obviously, if we could do a one-for-one -one swap, that would be preferable. Obviously, if we could get our innocent hostages back for free, all 250 of them, 50 days ago, nearly 50 days ago, that would have been preferable. So the idea that you take Israel's willingness to release people who have been convicted of violent offences in order to get innocent children who've been held in a tunnel 50, nearly 50 days ago, and to turn that somehow into a narrative of dehumanization against Israel, as if that somehow is a reflection that we are the ones missing a moral compass. Really, I think insinuations like that are outrageous. It is Hamas that devalues lives. That is Hamas that devalues Israeli lives and Palestinian lives, as we see from the reckless way that they've been trying to use innocent Palestinian civilians as human shields in this war. And as you can see from Israel's efforts to get them out of harm's way so that we can target the monsters who perpetrated that horrific, barbaric massacre on October 7th. I've been very surprised by a lot of the reaction of certain prominent figures. Gary Lineker, the footballer, former footballer, being one of them, who recently shared a tweet from a prominent left-wing commentator in this country, Owen Jones, which basically was an interview he did with somebody saying that what Israel was engaging in was a textbook genocide. Because the intent is expressed so explicitly, so directly, in such unashamed uh, uh, ways, and it's continued to be expressed in this way, um, then I do think that what we're seeing in front of our eyes is a textbook case uh, uh, of genocide. Uh, Gary Lineker, of course, works for the BBC as well. I mean, again, what do you make when you when you see people, prominent people, going out of their way to tweet something like that, under the guise, by the way, of, of trying to remain neutral? I'm not expressing a view, I'm just saying you should have a look at this. It's a really outrageous accusation, and I'm torn between wondering whether it's by people who are too stupid to open a dictionary and read the definition, or a question of projection. Because an act of genocide did take place on October 7th. 
when Hamas death squads invaded southern Israel and murdered everyone they saw as brutally as possible, when they burned people, beheaded people, tortured them, mutilated them, parents in front of their children, children in front of their parents, when they committed acts of barbaric rape, that was a campaign of systematic extermination by Hamas's army of terror, which tells us that it wants to perpetrate another October 7th and another October 7th and a million October 7th, as many as it takes to murder every man, woman, child in our country. Mm. And in response to that, we're fighting a war to target the monsters who did that, going blue in the face, trying to get civilians out of harm's way, despite Hamas's efforts to embed itself in civilian areas in clear violation of humanitarian law. So to take the suffering and the trauma that we have suffered, the deadliest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust, and to somehow turn that against us and turn us into the villains really shows an atrocious uh, degree of total moral bankruptcy.